Hey, what's up guys? My name is Cameron Gallagher and today we're going to be color grading some red 5k uh, raw footage, R3D. Um, and I'm kind of going to be doing this from scratch, so this isn't, I haven't planned anything I'm going to do here. Um, so it's going to be a little bit of a longer video possibly, kind of depends on how I end up grading this. But I'm going to kind of show you how I do things, how working with red footage is amazing. Um, and the different types of stuff we can do. So, I opened this R3D, this is from a music video that I shot. Um, for Hollywood Anderson, which is coming out very soon. Um, make sure to go follow Hollywood Anderson on social media. He was on American Idol, absolutely amazing musician. This is the R3D shot right here. So we basically knew what we wanted when we shot this. Um, so I ended up shooting with, just to give you an idea of what's going on here lighting wise, um, what we had was a 300 watt tungsten light coming from the back with a red gel. Um, backlighting and you can kind of see that in the right hand corner here and then what we had on this left hand side was actually a just a piece of foam core on a C stand um, just bouncing some of that red back and then up top we had a 300 watt uh, tungsten with a like this teal kind of color uh, gel uh, through diffusion um, just a piece of silk on a um, C stand and that was straight down. So this is kind of like your, this is somewhat, I, I shouldn't say that, but this is somewhat of like a beauty lighting technique, um, modeling, things like that. And basically that's what this was, a model shot. Um, so anyway, you can kind of get the idea. Uh, we originally shot this at ISO 800, which could go, you know, we can kind of see it's, it's, it's kind of underexposed. Um, but I knew with the flexibility of red that I could push that a little bit further and obviously change that, which is one of the huge things about working with a red camera. If you've never worked with one before, I would say one of the biggest pluses, obviously the image quality is incredible um, and the frame rates are amazing. But I think one of the biggest flexibility, you know, or excuse me, one of the biggest things about it is its flexibility. The fact that you can change so many things afterward, yet it doesn't run at an incredibly high bit rate. Um, I believe the Dragon maxes out at like 280 megabytes per second or something like that, which is really great. Um, you know, considering like the, even the, the Ursa Mini uncompressed raw is like 500 megabytes a second. So, you know, almost double. Um, so anyway, let's get into it. So I'm in DaVinci Resolve here, and of course you would go in and uh, you can just bring in your media like normal. I have tutorials on how to bring in your media, but when we click on these raw settings over here, I'm gonna click Clip, and this is where we can kind of change its color space, its color science, um, what our gamma curve is, and all these raw settings, which blows my mind. Um, so let's kind of play around with some of these and just kind of see what they do. So for instance, our color space. This has a lot of different things you can do with it. And with with red cameras, there's a lot of options. For instance, dragon color is the default when you bring it in. <clears throat> you have Rec 2020, which is uh, HDR, basically. Um, and you have a little more just color uh, information. And you can kind of see that when we go through. Now, I don't have an HDR monitor, so I mean, I can't totally see it perfectly, but or, you know, Rec 2020 monitor or whatever. But um, you can kind of see, like if we have a Rec 709, you can see how much contrast, how much more contrast is there, um, and the colors are a little more baked. Where at Rec 2020, you can kind of see there's this gradient. I think the hair over here is the biggest. There's this gradient in the reds. Um, I, you know, I don't really think it matters a ton. It, it depends on what your output is. For instance, right now there is not a lot of HDR options out there that aren't very expensive. Um, YouTube doesn't have it. Um, and we did shoot this at the YouTube space, so this has to go on YouTube. That's one of the rules. So for me, I'm not going to worry about Rec 2020 or really a lot of these because it's going to be compressed to YouTube anyway. So I'm going to go with the dragon color just because that is the default. Um, and it's sort of like a baseline and it's a little nice in between to see if you go to Rec 709, we can see it's a little more crushed and a little too contrasty. The dragon color is a nice in between. Um, so yeah, of course you can change the gamma curve, uh, kind of same thing, Rec 709, if we wanted to do like the log. Um, but I'm honestly just gonna keep this at the gamma four, which basically gives you like, kind of what like Rec 709 would do, a more, you know, contrasty, saturated image, not super log. I find that grading red, I don't like to grade 
log red footage because honestly, I mean, sometimes it's nice to have the flexibility, but half the time I find that it the the codec is so easily workable that you don't need it here. Oh, we also have some other stuff. Now, this I find very cool. Denoise, which I think is huge because for instance, this is the free version of DaVinci Resolve. So you'd have to pay like $1,000 for the uh, pro version, which has some great features. But for me, I just don't need it. But the fact that this has denoise inside of it is insane. So like we can do maximum and uh, you can kind of see it takes a little bit of the edge off there. I think that's too much, but I'd kind of do like the milder. To me, it just takes a little bit of that noise out. Um, of course, we could change ISO if we wanted. Um, we could go like a thousand. Whoops. Let's do a thousand. Um, I don't know. I Usually, I like to keep the ISO and I just work with curves personally. Same with contrast, all that kind of stuff. We could change the white balance. You know, I haven't seen what this looks like. Okay, so that's kind of cool. So that, that's kind of cool. You know, we could sort of play around with that. Um, I think I like this more red and green look. Uh, but that does look pretty cool because it gets more blue, purpley. Um, you know, you could meet somewhere in the middle too if you wanted. Oh, whoops. <laughs> somewhere in the actual middle. Uh, but we're going to keep it at 5600 because that's what we shot it at. Um, all right. So let's get into some actual grading here. Enough chitter chatter. So... As you can see, this is pretty underexposed. A theoretical perfect exposure um, are, you know, highlights over here would be at 100, well, at least close to 100, and her skin tone would be probably around that 500 line right there. Um, but I don't want that. I want this shot to be somewhat underexposed, but I think we do need to bring it up a little bit. So I like to work with curves first. I found that, and I'll kind of show you an example here. If we do this offset wheel, we just sort of boost everything up. It boosts everything. It even boosts the black because this was shot two, four to one. Um, it even boosts that, which I, I really don't like. Where the curves, we can really, really see it's actually working with the image. We can play with it. Of course, it looks terrible. But, all right. So, uh, let's try bringing up those highlights a little bit. Because we definitely want to make those a little bit punchier. I don't know how high I want her. Just gonna be there. Let's bring those darks nice and low. All right, so I'm kind of doing like uh, it's a little much, I think. That's not bad. Let's kind of see how that looks. No, oh, that might be a little too much. Let's try again. I feel like something like that is a little bit better. So we have this, this slight S curve. Um, it's not, I don't want it to be too contrasty because then you kind of lose um, the nice gradients in her skin with the lighting. So if you go too, you know, a little too far, that's that's a little much. All right, so that's pretty good. And this is the kind of thing with red and I found that this is an interesting idea and maybe it's just me and it make, make no sense at all. Um, I find that when I actually shoot with red cameras or, or higher end cameras in general, I find myself shooting closer to what I want in camera than if I were to shoot with um, an A7S or my pocket camera or things like that. I find that I've actually been better about shooting, um, you know, closer to the image I want in camera uh, with Red or the Ursa. Um, I'm not really sure why. It could be just kind of a psychological thing. I'm really not sure. Um, but I've actually found myself doing less and less grading on uh, a lot of these, which I think is really cool. So um, I'm going to go to my Victor scope because I can see that this is very saturated. Um, technically, I'm assuming it's this red right here. Yeah, this red would be out of the broadcast safe colors. So the problem is that if this were to go on like YouTube, this would probably just look like a red blotch just like really nasty. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to bring that red out just a tiny bit so it's not as extreme. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna click on my curves here. I'm actually gonna make a new node. That was my base node. I'm gonna click Alt S, new node. Uh, where is it? Make this bigger. 
And I'm going to click up here in this red. Now what you're gonna see is when I click on a point here with my curves open, it's going to bring up this line here. And we can see that these red is way up there. So I'm gonna click off, nope, I'm gonna click on just the red. And I'm gonna bring that just a touch down. And as you can see, now this isn't probably the exact proper way. I could just do like a qualifier and just qualify the red and turn it down. But I find that this kind of helps bring those highlights down too so they're not so powerful. But it also helps bring us back into our safe colors. See, if I really wanted to, I could go um, Alt-S, make another node, bring this in. And I could go to my qualifier. I could click on these reds, uh, click Shift-H so we could see those reds and I could bring down their saturation just a touch like that. And that just kind of helps. Shift H again, turn that off, and that's a little better. And we can make that bigger. And that kind of helps bring that back, and it's not, we're not losing that crazy. You can kind of see with those turned off, it's very, very strong saturated red, a little bit too bright. If I turn those off, it kind of dims them down, makes it a little more uh, just smoother in general. So what we're gonna do now is let's take a look at her skin tone. Now I know we're obviously using uh, color gels, so her skin tone's not gonna be perfect here, but I still kind of want to see what it's, what's going on in them. So I'm gonna make another node, and I'm gonna use the qualifier again. And I'm gonna kind of qualify just like a middle skin tone, like somewhere in there, Shift H, and let's see what we get. And we can just play with these until I seem to get just skin tone which we're not gonna get it perfect, but at least something. Something like that. Hmm, that's not bad. And what we could do is we could come in here, grab one of these windows, because I know it's just on her face, because obviously there's some colors around it that are similar, so I'm gonna do that Soften that just a touch. All right, go back. So this is just her face. So we can kind of see, obviously, it's way off. Um, and I expected that. But, of course, if we wanted to play with that a little bit, like if we really wanted to push those highlights towards that green, um, we could do that. And if we wanted to bring those shadows a little more towards red, let's see what that looks like. Shift H, turn that off. Um, you can kind of see that brought those... Her face, it's, it's very subtle, but it kind of brought her face a little bit more uh, from that blue-green to more of an actual green. Um, I kind of think I like it without it, actually. But, again, like I said, this is not scripted, so I'm not giving you some fake color grading. This is just me, man. This is just me trying to get it right. Um, so, honestly, this looks like a really good image. I mean, the only thing I might do, just kind of see, I'm going to click Alt-S again and add another node. I'm going to kind of see what it would look like if I did add more contrast. I don't think I'm going to like it. Yeah, I don't like it. Um, I think it's just too much. But So let's check out what we did here. So if we turn these off. So this was our original shot 800 at the Dragon 2 color space with the Gamma 4, red Gamma 4. Um, so we brought it up a little bit brought her skin you can kind of see we made her face a little bit lighter which also did make this a little bit lighter too um, then we brought down those reds just a touch and brought down their saturation what I might actually do alt s alt l so this makes two layers here um, a mixer and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this bottom technically the top layer and I'm gonna make another little because I'm gonna I want to brighten her face up a little more do something like that make it a little bigger maybe and then let's go back to curves let's brighten it up but then add a tiny bit of that contrast back in there we go so I think that should be cool so you can kind of see if we turn these off it just gave her just a little bit extra in her face there and help bring those highlights up a little bit, which is what I want, because I want these to be a little bit, you know, nice and bright, so we're not losing it. Um, like I said, these are all very fine details. I find that if you shoot as best you can in camera, you're doing less grading after the fact, and that's what I want to do. Um, 
you know, I mean, I could technically turn all these off and, you know, uh, this doesn't even look bad. You, you know, I, I would, I think, I think this basic brightening does a lot, but obviously we're kind of nitpicking with these things. Um, but again, I think it's very simple. I think color grading should be somewhat simple. You know, I don't think every time you don't need to use LUTs or, you know, do some immaculate grade from, uh, from log, uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, it's kind of a little more laid back, a little bit longer. It's going to be kind of long. Um, but I think it's a cool look at what you can do with R3D Raw. You know, so many different things over here. Um, you know, I'd even go over, of course, we could do things like tint, which is white balance, or shadow exposure, stuff like that um, over here. The only thing that you have to be careful about using the raw settings, which I found, is when you change the raw settings, you're changing the raw settings. So you're changing the settings of that clip. So, um, if you change it, you know, that, that could cause problems down the road. Uh, I don't like to, that's why I don't like to grade in the raw settings. You know, some people will add contrast and saturation and, you know, uh, brightness and all this stuff in the raw settings. I don't think that's the best way to grade because I think you should make it neutral. You know, if you need to fix your exposure, if it's like way under, and you need to fix it in your raw settings or your saturation for some reason is like really low or it's a really low contrast. I understand that, but I think you're better off doing nodes and doing these things after the fact. Um, but still, the flexibility that you have uh, to, to me is awesome. And like we could see if we went to Rec 2020, what it would look like. Um, but again, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, like I said, you know, pretty laid back. I do have a lot more videos coming. Um, the problem is I haven't been able to show too much of this video because obviously it's not out yet. So once the video comes out April 1st, I'll be able to show you guys a lot more behind the scenes. We're going to have some actual behind the scenes too coming up, shooting with some of the red cameras. Um, some interesting things that I've learned in using those recently. Um, some cool lighting techniques. I have also a great review coming hopefully very soon on the Quasar Science uh, LED lights, which are seriously awesome. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for those. Please subscribe, like, um, do all that. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. It kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of just, you know, uh, some, some basic red color grading. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and have a good one.